Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Today's lesson has to do with simplifying algebraic expressions, in this case, working with negative and fractional exponents. Now this question comes to us from Doug, who's a viewer, and has a very specific question, which is this. How do you simplify 2x to the negative 7 fourths power over 4x to the 4 thirds power? So we've got a negative exponent there, and uh, um, both of these are fractional exponents. Now the idea is we have to simplify this. When we say the word simplify, that implies that we cannot have any negative exponents anywhere. So we've got to somehow get rid of that. And we can't have a fractional exponent in the denominator. In other words, we can't have something like this. Uh, for example, 8 over x to the um, 2 thirds power where the 2 thirds power is in the denominator. It's not considered simplified if you have a fractional exponent in the denominator. Okay, so we cannot have that either. All right, so that's our task. Here's what we've got to do. First of all, this 2 is a multiplier here with the x to the power. Okay, so we need to kind of separate that out. This is a 4 being multiplied by x to another power. So if you had just two fourths, you know you'd have to take out a factor of two. So now I'm just going to simplify and I'm going to come up with um, a one on the top and a two on the bottom. Okay. The other part of it is I need to, because I'm going to be working with these fractional exponents, I need to, um, and when we multiply and divide by powers, that's really an adding and a subtraction rule. So I need to find a common denominator, believe it or not. And if I look at the 4 here and the 3 here, that means I need to have a denominator of 12. So I'm going to convert by multiplying this fractional power here by 3 over 3 and this fractional power by 4 over 4. Because now I would have 4 times 3 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12. So in other words, I'm converting these exponents into the same denominator power. So let's rewrite this mess and see what happens here. Now I have a 1, um, which I'll go ahead and write, but I really can make it disappear after a while, times x to the negative 21 over 12. Okay, I let my ink kind of catch up there after a while. And on the bottom, I have a 2 times x to the 16 twelfths power. All right, because later I'll be working with these um, fractional exponents. I have to make sure they have the same denominator. All right, now what's our next step? A negative exponent means that the base and the exponent all get moved down to a different place in the fraction. So if it's in the numerator of the fraction, like it is, we have to move it downstairs. So, trying to keep things organized here now. So I have a 1 on the top, and I have a 2 times x to the 16 twelfths times x to the 21 twelfths. When you're multiplying like bases together, you're going to add those exponents together. So, And I know they're fractions, but for now we have to kind of deal with that. So think about what's 16 twelfths plus 21 twelfths. That would be, now the power of x is going to be to the 37 twelfths. Okay, now let's take a look at our instructions again. We cannot have a negative exponent, we cannot have a fractional exponent if it's in the denominator. Well, we've got this fractional power here. Okay, we got rid of the negative power, but now let's keep working on it and see what happens. All right, now here's a little trick that um, it's kind of an algebra trick. And the idea is that if we can create a negative exponent power in the denominator, then all we have to do is move it up and it becomes a positive exponent. So we're going to kind of manipulate this 37 twelfths. 
Now, what I want you to think about is multiples of 12. If this was, say, x to the 12 twelfths, that would be x to the first power, because you could simplify that fraction. If this was x to the 24 twelfths, that would be really x squared. If this was x to the 36 over 12, that would be x to the third power. If this was x to the 48 twelfths, that would be the same as x to the fourth power. Well, I'm short of the 48. And so what I'm going to do is sort of break this apart again. And again, it's kind of an algebra trick, but sometimes you have to do these manipulations to simplify something further. So I now have 1 over 2 times. Now let's rewrite this x to the 37 twelfths as x to the 48 twelfths. And we know what another name for that is. Minus 37 from 48 is going to be 11. All right. So we just create 37 twelfths with a little subtraction problem. Now these are both exponents. It's a little hard to tell here the way I wrote it. So here's what we've got. That's going to be 1 over 2 times x to the 4th times x to the negative 11 twelfths. Okay, notice how I split it apart. If you are subtracting exponents, um, you can write it as a um, subtraction problem here. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So, now remember, remember you, whenever you have a negative exponent, it gets put into the opposite place in the fraction. So if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, now you bump it up to the numerator. So, final answer. On the top, I have a 1, which can be ignored, and the x to the negative 11 twelfths on the denominator now becomes to the positive 11 twelfths in the numerator. It's okay to have a fractional power if it's in the numerator. And on the bottom, we still have left over a 2x to the 4th, take out that multiplication dot. So, believe it or not, the final answer, x to the 11 twelfths over 2x to the 4th. Doug, thank you very much for the question. There's a lot of stuff in there, and you just have to kind of do this little algebraic trick and rewrite your power as a subtraction problem so you can bump it up. Okay? I hope that makes sense, and keep those questions coming. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.